Everybody wants to crane their necks to look at this car. And no lie, here's the thing. Oh, by the way, welcome to the channel. Um, everywhere you go in a Supra, which it's been out for a while, I, I almost don't understand. Everywhere you go, people want to look at it. People want to talk to you about it. People want to challenge you to races. I am not kidding. In the time that I had the Supra, I was taking Hallie to volleyball and there was an absolutely epic, brand new Porsche 911 sitting in the parking lot. And as I'm leaving, the guy pulls up to me, rolls down his window and he's like, that's a cool Supra. Everyone wants a piece of this car. It, it kind of confounds these senses like, yeah, it's cool and all, but the mystique around the Supra, it's just something else. There's literally no other car I've tested in the entire time I've been testing cars on this channel that garners this kind of response, except the Acura NSX, which you're driving a bright orange mid-engine supercar. Check that link out for that video. But the Supra is most definitely in a class by itself. <laughs> What's going on everyone? Jax here for another sort of hot take in car video. I think these actually work really well for the hot takes with the kind of more sporty cars because why not be in the car doing what it's intended for? So today we've got the 2021 Toyota Supra. <laughs> All right, so first things first, if we're in a 2021 Supra, that means that the horsepower has been increased to 382 horsepower and 368 pound-feet of torque. And it's not like the Supra was lacking for power before. I speculated in my previous review of the Supra last summer that it seemed like it was maybe underrated a little bit anyway because it was seriously quick. So quick, in fact, that this car's uprated power plant theoretically doesn't change the zero to 60 time. In most of the magazine's testing, it still hits 60 miles an hour around four seconds, which is impressive. A lot of those important changes for the 2020 to the 2021 model year were not just in the engine though, they were in the chassis, specifically the suspension, because the Supra had a tendency to kind of pogo around a little bit, especially in the rear end. and this model is supposedly supposed to fix that. So I'm gonna put it in sport mode and we are on the handling road and let's see uh, how that rear end feels over this first rough patch. It's definitely compliant on initial impact. I mean, considering you're driving a two seat sports car and the roll is controlled around the first sort of sharp turn here. There's still a lot of motion from the rear end. It doesn't seem quite as busy as the last model. The steering is great, by the way. It's very precise. It's, I like the weighting. I think it's perfectly weighted. It's precise off center in sport mode. I complained that there was a little bit of a dead spot last year. Doesn't seem to be that way this year. Big bump coming up. Not bad at all for a two seat sports car. I do think over some of those rough patches, I am not a chassis engineer expert, but I do think that the compression is good, but the rebound seems like inadequate or something. Like it's not rebounding fast enough, if that makes sense. It's just slamming back down again. Woo, but the engine is great. That engine does not need any introduction. It is the twin turbo straight six. Yeah, sure, buddy. Just pull out in front of a silver Supra. Way to go there, guy in the Tahoe. Super cool of you. This engine is the twin turbo 
BMW straight six, sorry Toyota, but it is, and it is fan freaking tastic. When combined with this eight speed automatic transmission, I mean, this powertrain, engine and transmission, this is, in my opinion, one of the kind of core defining characteristics of this car. Now, sadly, must be said, that one of the other core defining characteristics of this car, which was the fact that it would crackle and pop and burble on the overrun, they took that out. Yeah, with this new engine tune, doesn't do that. Now compare it to the old version. Yeah, that was better, right? I mean, I'm not crazy, am I? I mean, yes, I am, but, but this engine. Oh, yeah, like, <laughs> it's, up, 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 there was a little bit, there was a little bit, little bit of a burble right there. It is definitely reduced compared to how it used to be, but it is still there just a tiny bit. Okay, okay, I'll give it to you, Supra. But my God, it's so fun. It, the, the chassis, yes, I, I know there's still some suspension issues according to like Motor Trend and some of the magazines, but on the street, this car is just fun. There's just a sense of occasion. Like going up this hill, quick cop check, bury it. And it slams home those gear changes. It just, man, on these back roads, it's just an absolute riot to drive. I, I just don't know another car that I've tested or that's on the market, let's just be honest, another car that's on the market that gets this kind of attention, has this kind of pop culture mystique, has this sort of essence to it that the Supra does. It just, there's not something else like this. The engine just makes power everywhere at any speed. You bury your foot, mild delay, turbo spool, bam, you're gone. You're just like a ghost, you're a phantom. Now, some demerits. The auto start stop system that shuts off the engine is still absolute trash. It is the worst version of a system like that that I've ever driven. It is horrible. The low speed braking in this car is not great. They're a little grabby. And why, by the way, does it have one of the ugliest steering wheels I've seen in a long time? This steering wheel sucks, like in the way it looks. The grip is okay. It's a little on the thin side, surprisingly. But like, why is it so freaking ugly? I'm gonna erase those thoughts with some engine. <laughs> oh man, there is definitely not enough pops and burbles and growls and whatever like from last time. It was way more insane last time. Go watch that video if you want to see my first experience with the Supra. I went through a lot of the stuff in more detail. This is more of a hot take driving impressions. And the gauge cluster still seems like a wasted opportunity with a bunch of wasted space. I don't understand why it's like fully electronic and it's not more interactive. You switch it to sport mode and literally nothing happens. Literally nothing happens. It just comes up with a tiny little thing that says sport. I want it to be like, like it's Optimus Prime or something. It turn like white and red. My name is Optimus Prime. But no, it's just like sport in your Supra. Hold on. God, it winds up and just sounds so soulful almost. It's almost got like some soul to it. And I love how it pops off those downshifts as you approach a stop, you know? It's, you don't even need to do it yourself. The automatic transmission is very intuitive. It knows what you're after. It knows what you're trying to do. And it's here for you. It wants to help. It's like, I got you, man. Let's do this. How does a car like this feel so much faster than that Lexus RCF Track Edition? I don't get it because that car has a fantastic V8 engine. It's one of my favorite V8s on the market, hugely underrated in sort of like the car culture. It's just such an amazing engine. But that car and this car are objectively, especially zero to 60 times, not all that 
different, yet this car feels faster and more frenetic and more edgy. This car like wants you to learn how to drive properly. I feel like the RCF track was like, you could be a buffoon and I'll figure it out and help you and be big and smooth and powerful. This car is like, if you're a buffoon, you're gonna die. And I don't care. In fact, I don't care if you die. I might even kill you myself. It's just another type of vehicle. At speed, the brakes are all right though. They don't bother me when you get going fast and this it will haul this car down from, from a high speed. They're powerful, no doubt about that. They just, uh, at low speeds, they're very grabby. They don't have great kind of modulation. The pedal firmness is all right, but they just are very kind of lurchy at low speeds. I found this new road, by the way, right here. It's just an empty road through the forest, and it's like five minutes from my house. And this steer the steering is so much more precise. I, I swear the steering is more precise than it was last year. It feels like just minimal inputs, maximum results, but you cannot be ham-fisted with this car. It would not end well. And by not well, I mean death. Like death, dead, fiery crash. <laughs> oh, that guy just went by an X5M and he was like, Supra? Like home improvement? <laughs> I just totally dated myself right there. I'm old, sorry guys. One thing you notice when you hit that acceleration from a very low speed, you know, first gear kind of pull, the Supra rocks back on its haunches and the front end, I mean, it gets a little light, gets a little squirrely. Definitely not something you'd want to turn your back on, literally or figuratively. Now, let's talk one of the uh, kind of demerits of this car that I've noticed. Um, you might have heard some of the creaking and rattling. I mentioned this last year. The interior, the materials are high quality. It feels nice in here. But in this hot Georgia weather, the interior creaks and rattles all over the place. And there's something going on with the luggage cover in this one. And it's rattling like crazy. I took a look at it, tried to like refit it and made no difference at all, so I don't know what the heck is going on. Yeah, it's really unbecoming in a car that costs the better part of $60,000. This Supra is not cheap. This model here is like 50, six, 700, somewhere in that range, and that's a lot of money, especially, and I said this last time, you can get a Camaro SS1 LE that has been rated quicker around a number of tracks here in America. And now with incentives, you can get that for under 50 grand. That makes the Supra a tough pill to swallow in some cases. You're paying a lot for the aura of this car. We'll call it that. And this, and this. Oh my God. You better be on it with this steering though, man. Woo -hoo -hoo, you sneeze and you are in the trees. Why have I not been down this road before? This road is awesome. Oh, okay, there, the rear suspension, a little pogo right there. God, those downshifts are so good. So good. <laughs> oh, hey, what's up, Saturn Sky? <laughs> oh, I just devalued that guy's whole Sunday. He was like, I'm in my convertible Saturn Sky. Oh, there's a super. Oh, God. Oh, oh, no. This car does put a smile on your face, though. I made that comparison to the Camaro and the Mustang last time. Objectively, around many tracks, they are faster. That was the old Supra though. Uh, compared to this one, I don't know. But the Camaro 1LE beat the Supra in car driver's lightning lap by several seconds. So I'm not 100% sure that these chassis and engine changes would necessarily negate that difference. But you know what? If you want this car, then you want this car. Like, you're already in the market. And I, I said that before, but having lived with it for another week with these updates, I'm even more convinced about that. Like, there's something about it that transcends what it is on paper. I don't think the Corvette comparisons are necessarily appropriate because we've now seen that the C8 is in short supply and that to get a lot of stuff on it, you're gonna spend 
quite a bit more than that advertised base price. So I'm kind of throwing that one out. I don't think it's fair to compare the Supra to the Corvette at all. Really just compare it to the Camaro and the Mustang. And to be honest with you, this car is a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. And I like the attention it gets because here's the thing about the attention it gets. You drive some cars for the attention because you're kind of like, what's the word I'm looking for? A loser. And I don't feel that way in the Supra. I feel like it gets attention from enthusiasts. Young and old alike. Kids driving Civics and older guys driving brand new Porsche 911s. I don't even mind the styling all that much anymore. I mean, you've been looking at glamour shots of this thing the whole time I've been driving. What, what do you think? Comment down below, has the styling grown on you? I would say, yes, it has. It has definitely grown on me. Is it traditionally beautiful? No. Is it as striking as the C8? No. Is it better looking than a Camaro and a Mustang? I would say yes in many cases. It's just there's a lot of options in this price range, and that's what I would come back to. That would be the sticking point, because you could get a damn good used C7 Corvette for the price of this car. And that's where I would have trouble. That's where I would, and I'm not saying I would pick a used C7. Well, who am I kidding? I'm a Corvette guy and a pilot. Of course I would pick a used C7 over this car. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Yes, that's what I would do personally. I would pick a used C7. Should you pick a used C7 over this car? Should you buy a Toyota Supra, as I always say at the end of these videos? I don't think you'd be disappointed at all if you did. And here's why. Let me, let me kind of break it down like this. This is what I think about the Supra experience. This is a rewarding car to drive, even thrilling in some ways. Like here's a nice turn, thrilling. And there is a sense of accomplishment to mastering a car like this. And I think that's worth something. I totally think that's worth something. Just know before you buy one what you're getting into. And I don't think you'll be disappointed. <laughs> Even at partial throttle, the engine's like, let's go. <laughs> That's so ridiculous. Oh my gosh, I would love to drive this car in the RCF back to back. Now I'm behind the slowest Kia in the world. 10 under the speed limit is how I live my life. I don't even know why I got out of bed this morning. He's got colored sticker dots all over the back of his or her car as well. Like just randomly placed. Like they thought about starting a mobile clown business and then decided not to at the last minute but just left the stickers. Gratuitous engine sounds. <laughs> if you stuck around this long, you're just here for stuff like this at this point. Comment gratuitous engine sounds in the comments to see who made it to the end. I'm here for the gratuitous engine sounds. Ha ha ha.